it always will come back to the prompt. However intricate or basic the prompt engineering is in the future. And there will be people who are in charge of making those and maintaining those. But I think generally that will be a small-ish number of people. And a lot of people who derive the value will be the people who are interfacing with them via prompts as a service, via forms. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, dogs, cats, robots, and everybody in between, especially you, those searching for a place for your prompts to call a home. This is HTTTA, How to Talk to AI. I am your host, West and Synthmine West. As always, in a realm governed by gigabytes where grand algorithms valvanize our every move, there emerges a gem, a guiding light in the grandeur of AI. Welcome to the genius of tomorrow, the genuine, the glamorous, this go to go. Gee, how are you this week? Hi, I am extremely happy this week, and I have huge news, which what both news? of us should be sharing. I suppose. So last week we talked about our Up Limit course that we closed um, and the amazing feedback we received. However, Up Limit came back to us with, what, 13 pages of First, feedback? 13 pages of feedback. Yes. It was about the most heartwarming stuff I've ever read. So everyone that was in the course, man, you guys brought it was so much fun. We're going to have our next run of AI and chat GPT for everyone January 15th, kicking off um, with a soon to be announced follow on course from the team here at SynthVines. You know, but again, that was such a professionally rewarding thing. Thanks to everyone that came out from our listeners, Goda's viewers, people who follow us. It was such a treat. But speaking of treat, we have yes. one for you today. <laughs> so the second one is we have a special guest on our podcast today, Dan Cleary. Welcome, yeah. Dan. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. You know, I get asked a lot, like, why did you want to start your own company? It's really hard. It's an uphill battle. But that intro alone, I think, the, is the, my reason for the next month. So, yeah, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> cool, awesome. man. Well, let me give some our listeners a little bit more context about Dan and what he has going on or has accomplished in this uh, world so far. Uh, from his college dorm uh, at NYU, to the forefront of AI here, Dan Cleary has always had a knack for building, beginning his career by launching a software development agency. Dan helped early stage startups with all things software. Later on, he and his partner Dalton went on to launch their own SaaS bug reporting tool amidst their agency work. The tool gained traction, leading to it, them to a Silicon Valley accelerator pioneer. They went on to raise funding shortly after their demo day, and then, last November, ChatGPT launched, and Dan saw an opportunity that led Dan and Dalton to launch PromptHub.us, a collaborative platform to test, iterate, and build on top of prompts. PromptHub is now used by hundreds of business owners, developers, and people who are using prompts every day. So again, Dan, welcome. We would love for you to take us through PromptHub.us. Absolutely. Let's do it. And I have a question. How is Silicon Valley? <laughs> I would say a lot of what you hear is true. The, the conversations that you overhear on the street are about server architecture and things of that nature. Um, so it really does feel that way, um, which is a really fun place to be. We were out there for a month and it's everybody around you is working on something software related. And so it's a great place to be in the early stages of a company. Amazing. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Would you like to jump right into the prompt hub? Or just give us a little bit of an overview of what it is and maybe why those hundreds of uh, organizations are using it. Yeah, I'd love to give a quick elevator pitch of it. And I think Wes did a really great job. But basically what we wanted to build with Prompt Hub was a place to work on prompts collaboratively and use them for whatever reason you know you may have. The genesis of it was that we were building a AI feature into our bug reporting tool, SaaS company, and the process of getting the prompt to work well, iterating on it, testing it with data, testing it across different models and stuff. It was all really challenging and we're left to a lot of different manual solutions. And so we thought, hey, there's got to be a better way. Um, but since the industry is so nascent, we knew there weren't going to be a lot of good tools out there. And we decided to spin something up and we're like, hey, this is pretty useful for our use case. So then we went to a couple other founders that we knew, ran it past them and got 
some pretty good feedback. And so we decided to kind of go all in with it. There's a couple of different use cases because prompts are so ubiquitous. You, know, you could be building them into your full scale product. Um, you could be just using them every day. You could be using them to make your company more efficient um, and work at the center of all that. We want to help it make get from A to B faster with prompts. And then whatever you want to do with them, you always have a place where you can come back and work on them or deploy them. And that's how we see ourselves in the ecosystem. I think the first time I tried it, it immediately reminded me of GitHub in the sense that it functions like a collaborative tool where you still have the initial uh, prompt that is pushed or posted, and then you can iterate every little bit of changes or certain changes or uh, rewind the tape a little bit. I found that is a very, very inventive way. Definitely better than a bunch of uh, TXT files or a, uh, a spreadsheet. I just wanted to say that because I made a video and I don't know if you've seen that I implemented API of GP, or GPT 3.5 into Google mm -hmm. Sheets. And the primary use for me was to test prompts, you know, just like <laughs> drag and drop, play with variables. And now I have prompt hub in front of me and I'm like, yeah, this is way smoother <laughs> and way smarter solution. Yeah, and no, I wish we caught you then. Um, but yeah, that's definitely the main use case. And our initial kind of uh, saying out of the gate was, yeah, we wanted to be like GitHub for prompts. And so the versioning and collaboration was really at the core of what we were going to do um, because, yeah, we found... Testing was was particularly difficult. Um, even just trying to compare outputs side by side is kind of impossible in any of the current playgrounds. And so we wanted to make that that easy so you could really kind of tweak whatever you want, be really uh, meticulous about that. And that was a big thing for us out of the gate. Fantastic. Yeah, I found that I've tried probably half a dozen or a dozen prompt IDEs. And for our listeners and viewers, an IDE is a software term, meaning integrated development environment. So there's plenty of these if you search for prompt IDE. There's dozens of little pop-ups, but they inherently are very technical, um, or at least they put a very technical, they're looking at, they're presenting themselves through this very technical lens. And, uh, what I thought immediately was appealing about prompt hub is even if you have no idea what GitHub is, but you're creating prompts or you're collaborating on prompts, um, it was very, very approachable. So that was immediately appreciated too. Yeah. No, I think that's a, a really good point. And it's actually something we wanted to focus on too, because we think with ChatGPT, with these AI models coming out, the amount of people who can build something is going to be continue to increase. You don't need to be a developer anymore. And so we want to focus on that, that segment that is going to be a growing segment. And so our user-friendly product was really big out of the gate. How about we go to promthub.us? Yes. I uh, just want to make it clear that's <laughs> the direction yeah, you, you should that. go. And just if you could just walk us through the whole, you know, interface and options and features. Cool. And for listeners, under the episode, you will find a link where you can actually enjoy this episode in a video format. But Dan, if I could ask you, you know, if you can just use as much descriptive language as possible for the listeners of a podcast. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like we I've kind of mentioned, um, Prompt Hub is a home for your prompts. And so... You can see my, all of my prompts kind of laid out in different tiles here. And this is from all of my team. And they range from content creation to different types of changing the shape of different formats, some stuff we built for clients back in the day. So everything that we use in our business in some way or another is, is listed in here. Um, and so I'm going to click on one of these. Let's see, we'll go to our LinkedIn one is a good one. So we... We write and post a lot of content on our blog. And so whenever we do that, we'll end up posting a LinkedIn post as well. And so I created a little prompt basically to help with that process. But so when you click on a prompt and you come into the testing page, you all have access to the system message and the prompt, which is, gives you an extra boost in terms of getting the model to do what you want, I would say a little bit more. And then you have access to all the parameters as well that come along with the different open AI models that are available. So for listeners, system message in this case, as a reference would be, you know, what more people know now is custom instructions on ChatGPT. Exactly. Yes. You know, so I can come in here and I've written a prompt to help with this LinkedIn creation, LinkedIn post creation. And you'll see if you're watching this, I have a couple of blue pieces of text in here. These are just variables and these allow me to plug in different things into the prompt and easily use it. So I can use the same prompt as the content of the article changes that we write every single week. I just fill in the variables here. I replace the content with whatever article that we've written, and then I can 
run the prompt. And so it helps to keep it a little bit more clean rather than seeing really big pieces of text kind of floating around. And so what Wes, what I was kind of mentioning before and piggybacking off of what Goda said, we, what we really wanted to make was the process of iterating and testing prompts a lot easier. And so with every test you run, you're comparing your last output in red to your new output in green. And so a classic flow is to come in, write a prompt, tweak it a little bit, and then commit the changes. You know, maybe you updated the temperature, maybe you added a different example, maybe you tried out a different method um, that you picked up from the uplimit course, whatever it might be. <laughs> um, then you can just make a note. And this is the GitHub inspired aspect of it. Definitely. Uh, you get a nice kind of version history that you can always fall back to. Nice. So again, for our listeners, you have this, this system message block, which again is the person that the text behind the curtain that's pulling the levers, uh, you have your input. There's some very elegant ways to uh, make the prompt reusable with the variables pop up screen. Um, and then on the right hand side, you get all the little levers. That's something you don't get when you're using chat GPT. You only when the use the playground or some of these other tools, you get, you can adjust your tokens, your temperature, your top B, presence, frequency, penalty, and ch change your model. You want to tell us about some of the models that you have integrated uh, right now? Yeah. So right now we offer access to all the open AI models and in the near future, hopefully within the next kind of 10 days or so, we'll be integrating um, Anthropics models. So you can do these really awesome. cool side-by-side -side tests between the providers because I mean, even as great as open AI is, sometimes a different model is going to be better you know, just for context window reasons or for performance reasons or for specific tasks. There's, it's good to explore that. So we'll be offering that for our users soon. And even seeing what model does the best for the job at hand, uh, comparing mm -hmm. it one to the other. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. GPT-4 is, is considerably more expensive and it, it's great. Um, but if you're doing a basic classification test, uh, you might not need it. Yeah, I've been testing Open Interpreter and running mm. on GPT-4, two days, 20 okay. bucks. And I was like, nah, maybe for organizing my files, I don't need <laughs> four. I just wanted to go and test with the best yeah. of the best. Um, then we also, what we are seeing now, this window, what we are looking is under the test, but there is reports, feedback, and forms. Could you mm -hmm. walk us through that? Yeah, I'll jump over to the form. It's our newest, and I would say, most powerful feature yet. And so what this allows you to do is turn your prompt into a form. So what does that mean? It makes it accessible to anybody on your team to run that prompt just from a link. And so mm -hmm. I clicked on the form tab now and I've come over, I can add some instructions. I can do some customizations here. And basically I'm previewing what is a form for this LinkedIn post generator. And so now my team can come in and they can just input the content for whatever post they want to be created. And then they'll be able to generate a LinkedIn post using the prompt that, you know, I slave nights and weekends over. And so it's a really easy way to distribute the value of whatever type of prompt you're writing to people on your team, anybody that you want to make um, available to it, lead magnets or some, the use cases for forms are really kind of up to your imagination. So forms essentially functions as prompts as a service. Uh, would, yeah. you, would you kind of <laughs> classify it as that? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's the easiest way to deploy a prompt. And yeah, prompts as a service. I think it's something we're, we already see and we're going to continue yeah. to see more and more of. I'd be curious to hear, I mean, obviously just by virtue of you having this feature inside of Prompt Hub, it must be something that you guys are thinking about and talking about on the regular as the way the market is kind of heading. Our most viral prompt, uh, Professor <laughs> Synapse, that's been viewed over 100,000 times and used and shared ostensibly does the same thing. It takes the need for you to be a prompt engineer out of the equation and just ask you questions about what you're, you're trying to do. Um, do you think the future is, is prompt less, so to speak? And when this does hit the masses, they're going to be interfacing with prompts as a service because someone like us set up the site to generate their resume cover letter or their LinkedIn mm -hmm. post? Yeah, I think so. I think it always will come back to the prompt, however intricate or basic the prompt engineering is in the future. But it will always come back to that. And there will be people who are in charge of making those and maintaining those and making sure they're great, you know, like following logs, make sure there's no malicious behavior. But I think generally that will be a small-ish number of people. And a lot of people who derive the value will be the people who are interfacing with them via prompts as a service, via forms, via things of that nature. 
I Dan, I resonate with the sentiment so much. I had a business call and basically one of the partners was like, oh, I watched your video, Professor Sinev. So that's it. Prompt engineering is dead. <laughs> and, it, it, and I was like, yeah, but someone had to create, you know, Professor Sinev's. So yeah. this person, that person's value just grew um, incredibly. And then, Wes, you also shared this research that just came out about productivity and efficiency. And we yeah. measured people who actually know how to use AI. And basically, results probably did not surprise anyone, but <laughs> that becomes your kind of super employees. Um, so if you have a team member who can actually develop prompts, I'm thinking, let's say, marketing, develop prompts, distribute it to the team, and then reiterate based on campaign. Yes. Uh, this was some research done by the Boston Consulting Group, and they published a paper about it. But no surprise, they measured yeah. uh, productivity and uh, efficiency and completion across 18 different tasks for um, hundreds of different people. And, you know, I think it's almost finished 12% more completed tasks, 25% uh, faster, produce 40% higher results um, when they're able to leverage AI tools. Thesis maintains uh, there's nothing more powerful than an expert human uh, equipped with some AI who knows how to use it. Yeah, I totally agree. You still need to know how to use the underlying tools. In the same way that software development has gotten easier and as we moved away from you know, machine code all the way to what we have today, you still need to have an understanding. You still need to be able to know the tooling will work. And so, yeah, those numbers definitely don't surprise me. And it's something we hear a lot talking to people, talking to business owners, especially. Everyone's trying to figure out what to do with AI. Um, and there's always a few people in the company that are chat GPT power users and know how to use this stuff. But a lot are still kind of lacking or still learning just because it's so, so new. And so the ability to distribute that kind of knowledge and value across the company, I think, is going to be really big, especially in the near future. So the one person who is going to be creating prompts and everyone else who is going to need to know how to use it properly. Exactly. In the same way that I could build a, a dashboard to look at all of our backend data and share that with my marketing team so that they could have up-to-date data. They don't need to know how to build this stuff, but they benefit from having those tools and infrastructure in place. Uh, there'll be a point here too, where a lot of these things are just optimized away for us. Now, even if you don't, if you don't know how to use these things extra well, there'll be enough data that kind of goes, okay, I think they're asking about this. Give them what they want, which is both good and bad. So one thing I would love to touch on too, I encourage folks, even if they don't have a direct need for um, a place for their prompts, their lonely prompts stored in some <laughs> Google seat somewhere or your downloads folder in a TXT file zipped away, never to be looked at again. Um, even if they don't have a need for those prompts to find a home, Dan and his team put out some excellent content on their blog about every week or two. I point people there all the time for uh, some of your beginner's guides, breaking down how you talk about temperature and top piece, some of those settings. I really encourage folks uh, to check that out. Is there any one of these posts that has gotten the best reception or are you excited about something that you're working on right now? Yeah, I think our most, um, the one that's got the best reception is the multi-persona prompting one, yeah. um, which I think is just, it's very interesting to think about because I think it mimics how you would expect humans to come to a good answer. And mm -hmm. so for some quick context, multi-persona prompting basically is when you tell a model, hey, get a group of people together to solve the problem. Um, and then they, the model kind of leads this brainstorming session and it's really cool. You can watch it happen. Um, and then they collaborate and they, they come to a final answer. And that one's definitely gotten a lot of reception. Um, we just launched a new one on, based on a research article from DeepMind about LLMs for optimizing prompts that I thought was really interesting. So that was the last one that came out. I saw it, the one where AIs optimize themselves and the winning one is like, take a deep breath. Yeah, that's this one. <laughs> it was like uh, laughing. Yeah. The interesting part about that too is if you scroll down with is actually the, I have the graph in here, but that take a deep breath part is related to, yeah, there it is. Yeah. Um, it's related to the Palm model. But if you look mm -hmm. at the best top instruction for GPT-4, it's now five sentences or five lines there. Um, and so the difference in terms of what the top instruction was for each model, you know, was a huge variance, which wow. is like a, kind of a head scratcher, but another just like really interesting intricacy across different models even. So this again, just proves the value of Prom Hub, what you showed then once you add different models, you will, you will be able to see what is the output and how it differs. Exactly. Yeah. And 
I think that's going to be really huge and really fun to, to mess around with. So this blog basically lives and breathes on prompt hub. Yes. Like we said, I encourage people to check this out. I think that's very funny. But if you think about it, too, if you're looking for the best response, I'm sure at some point to get those responses, there's enough cross pathways in that neural network that goes, all right, well, the people that are producing the best responses are relaxed and we've relaxed them or there's something. And it's just so much a reflection of a perfect articulation of how these models are a reflection of us, who we are as humans, because that is inherently a very human statement to yield a a top instruction outcome. You've been, you've been around this kind of world for a while. I mean, you had two other companies, you've done the Silicon Valley thing. I would love to get your uh, perspective or your advice for people that maybe have a good idea that uh, they don't know where to begin, or maybe they do know where to begin, but they don't know how to get to that next step. Can you get you share a little bit of your perspective mm-hmm. on that? I think the biggest thing is that there's always like a million reasons to not do something. Um, and so to always just jump into it, um, because the worst case scenario is nobody cares and nobody, nobody uses like you're saying, or like nobody goes to watch your videos. No one watches your videos, which I'm sure go to, you probably made a million in the beginning where the views were in the 10 digits or something small, but you got to start somewhere. Mm-hmm. I think people a lot of times maybe spin their wheels on like the perfect idea or I need the perfect team or I need to raise money first. And it's like, you don't need, you don't need to do any of that stuff. The only thing you need is a product and hopefully some users. Um, but a product with no users is actually maybe even more valuable because then you know you should work <laughs> working on something oh, else. Especially in AI these days, you need a seven page white paper. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's good for about 75 mil. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not pointing fingers anywhere, Wes, right? Oh, no. We're just bringing it up. That's, that's <laughs> the nature of the game. It's, it's so funny that you now there's so, so much interest in that. It hopefully is not a bubble in some ways, but I'm sure a lot of people are going to lose a lot of money because they're just going, okay, well, this, you said GPT, I'm in. Now here's a $100 million check. Yeah, it is. The, the, the fundraising like, landscape is certainly, you know, it's coming off a weird period where there was a, kind of a bubble before this, and then there's this yeah. new platform shift. So the coalescing of the two has been really interesting to watch, and I think will be for the next couple of years going forward. But yeah, I don't know. It's fun so to watch. With, with your other two products, Tether and Modus, they both have a different kind of use was raising money for those or launching those how how are those inherently uh different from prompt hubs uh origin so to speak so modus was the agency so modus was we did client work we would help um, mostly early stage companies and um, we built a lot of different things and so it was through our work at modus and our goal was always eventually to do our own product as much as we loved having clients we wanted to try our own route at things and so we then started to work on tether from there to make bug reporting easier for our clients. And then oh, again, and that was solving a problem that we ran into, which is what we also did with prompt hub, which is another piece of advice I would say is that if you want to try and start something, but you like, maybe don't have an idea, just look for whatever annoys you the most. And that's like a good place for, for inspiration. Yeah. Tether came from a problem we had to help our clients and then people started to like that. And then we kind of dove head first once we got into the accelerator that allow us to go in, drop our clients that we're currently working with um, and dive in with, uh, with Tether. And then eventually that led us to prompt up. Are you guys uh, actively out there kind of seeking funding? Are you looking for uh, investors? I know we have a great list of onboarders, a waiting list that will share mm-hmm. a, an mm-hmm. exciting, exciting code that Dan has set up for our listeners and viewers to uh, get a little earlier access to prompt hub but what's in the what's kind of in the uh the three to six month roadmap for prompt hub what are you hoping to achieve yes i mean on the fundraising front we aren't raising right now we may in later on in the year um, but right now we're currently just heads down in the product um and looking forward we you know adding different models making the testing suite a little bit more built out is something we're focusing on and then what we really want to do is we want to make it easier to deploy prompts and so the kind of prompts is a service model um, which we have in its current form, but we want to make it more, you know, easier to access, have a, like a really developed API that people can integrate stuff into whatever type of workflow that they may have. Because I mean, the thing with AI and people trying to leverage it is every situation is a little bit different. And so we need to be a really malleable solution. And so we'll be really pushing on that so that we can integrate us anywhere, however you want. I totally could see, for example, what you shared with LinkedIn post generator, like a 
maybe marketing package where it integrates with buffer or distribution thing that you generate a prompt and you can immediately schedule that on your social media. It doesn't need to that you develop scheduling. It can be ju- just plug and play with some of the platforms. I think we may need mm-hmm. a make.com integration is what I'm reading from that. Yes. <laughs> that make.com. <laughs> yeah. Let's go to new sponsor. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I should nope. be announcing it before I make it. <laughs> yeah. Only but, we'll do this in a couple weeks. Uh, right. Now I need to run make video, but yeah, make.com. And we partnered. So I'm very oh, excited nice. to show some of the things that our team built. Uh, and I'm looking to plug some integrations for myself and the whole social media building brand is constantly running in my head. And I know that yeah. it's a full-time job, so I'm just looking how to make it way smarter and smoother and run it with AI. So I actually mm-hmm. use things that I talk about at full scope and scale. Yeah. No, that sounds like a great use case. I mean, yeah, we have a bunch of people who are using Make. Obviously, the comp is, is safe here, but it seems like it's growing a lot more, at least in my circles. Um, so that's really great. Congrats on that. Thank you. I don't know if it's good time and place, but as Wes asked you about what's uh, coming in next three months, I know that you have something exciting coming where you actually bring the best minds in prompt engineering uh, together, you know, to discuss all these research papers and development. Do you want to walk us a bit through that? Yeah, definitely. So in early October here, just about a month away, October 12th, I am helping co-lead, co-run a prompt engineering conference. And the domain is promptengineering.rocks. Um, I'm doing it alongside a few other people. And it's all, um, you know, not for profit. It's just for people to get together to learn about different types of prompting methods, learn about how people are using prompts in their, you know, their daily lives. And it's going to be really good. We have a bunch of really good profound speakers coming in, a professor from Oxford, some people from Microsoft, a lot of different use cases. And it's all, it's very practical. Um, it's not, you, know, you don't have to learn, not, we're not going to be telling you what a neural network is or anything like that. We're kind of trying to get our hands like dirty with it and show you how you can walk away with something that's, that's helpful for you and online free one day. And it's going to be, yeah, it should be a lot of fun. Fantastic. I'm looking forward to that, right, Wes? Yeah, I think so. We may have a little uh, a little bit of involvement in that process. So <laughs> stay tuned for more announcements from your friends at HTTTA about our, our participation in the first annual Prompt Engineering Conference, October 12th. And Wes, I know that you slightly mentioned, and we maybe brushed through that, but this you know, little gift to the listeners to try yes. Prompt Hub, let's dive into that. So yes, uh, folks can go to prompthub.us, click on the join wait list, and if they use the code H-T-T-T-A-I, here is your, here's the VIP section, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we'll let you come on down to the red carpet and give Prompt Hub a try, give Dan some feedback, give them a follow on LinkedIn. I mean, even if you don't have any need, like I said, do yourself a favor, follow the blog. Oh my gosh. We cited your blog three times in our you know, record setting AI and chat GPT for everyone course, because it's just, I can't, there, I can't describe it better than this. <laughs> come read Dan's blog, come watch Dan's video. I appreciate that. I do. There is one, one note on that for the access front. I'm actually, you have to go to a different link. So it's not the join wait list. Oops. <laughs> if you go, um, different red carpet, like, <laughs> yeah, uh, if you just go to our site and hit the login button and then there'll be a sign up um, button beneath that and, you know, sign up today will be what the link there says, and you'll be able to type in that code and we all give you a direct link as well, but that would be the fastest way to go log in and then sign up today. Yeah. We will include everything in description right, right under here. video and newsletter. Yes. <laughs> yes. Sign up today and their app.prompthub.us slash login. You know, like if people want to try it out, could you a bit, if you're comfortable to talk about the pricing model, like how these things actually run on your side? Versus the user side. Yeah. So great news there. Everything's free right now. Bring your API key and you're good to go. Um, we will be r- rolling out monetization plans in the next month or so, but there will always be a free plan. But as of now, everything we've talked about today from forms to batch testing, everything's included. Um, you can add as many team members as you want. And you know, like I said, we really have a big goal of our, you know, with our blog and with the product is to help educate people. And so there will always be a free plan so you can access. Oh yeah, I, I love this. Like we are, I sense the vibe. We are very much aligned. In just yeah. a previous podcast with Joseph Rosenbaum, we talked exactly about this, why we gave 
Professor Synapse on YouTube free before course starts because to educate people and actually give them value and to see the curiosity spark up out of that. And when people start learning and when we have all these testimonials now that we actually know what happens when people learn, but also apply and get value immediately at their work. That's the most fascinating to me. I appreciate you and your team's work trying to cut through the noise. That's what we try to do ourselves. I can't deal with another Forbes article that's like, these 10 jet GBT prompts will change your life. And it's <laughs> one sentence prompt. And I'm like, come on, God, Bill, don't just put your toe in the pool. What? It was six, eight months now. Why don't you know that it's like yeah. old news? Everyone knows that it's not good stuff. I saw one today. It was like five chat GPT prompts to feel invincible at work. I'm like, what's that even mean? Like, you mean you don't like being told that you have no idea how you're using chat GPT and that the only way is to become uh, in the top 2% is to take this prompt sheet that I have? You don't you don't like those codes? You need Dan's top 3,000 prompts for <laughs> only the low price of nine ninety nine. <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, jumping on the pod today with us, Dan. Uh, aside from shooting over to PromptHub.us where can, and checking out PromptEngineering.rocks for the upcoming Prompt Engineering Conference, where else can uh, folks find what you got going on? Yeah, you can connect with me on LinkedIn, Dan Cleary, um, and we'll include a link. But yeah, connect with me on Twitter as well, Dan underscore Cleary, but we'll link there. But yeah, if you have ever any questions about prompt engineering, any of this stuff, I would always love to chat more. And so those are the two places I'm most active. And for our listeners and alumni from the course, can we ping you on the SymphMind's Discord? Yeah, of course. I'm right <laughs> in there with you guys. I'm happy and it's been great to collaborate with y'all. And I go to, like you said, I think, we share a lot of values in terms of being open. And I think your Discord is a good example of that. And all tides or tides raise, high tides raise all ships or whatever they're saying as it goes. As we teach people and they can apply it more, we all move forward. Um, yeah, feel free to reach out and listen to my Discord as well. This is perfect. No Final better words. Yes, that. I have exactly. nothing to add. <laughs> there you go. So Thank for you. go to go, Dan Cleary, I am Wes the Synth Mind saying happy prompting, everybody. Happy prompting, everybody. Then you can also do this. Happy prompting, everyone. (laughs) (laughs) As always, you can check out the show notes and links at howtotalkto.ai. That's all for this week's episode. Happy prompting, everyone.